Civil War era fort. Um, it took part in the Civil War and also in quelling Indian raids on settlers um, throughout the 1800s. And uh, I don't believe there's going to be a whole lot there when we get there, but we'll see. We'll see what we see. It's a historic site, so um, well, at least we'll just see the scenery. Um, it's down by Socorro, so we have been doing a lot of sites around the Socorro area, and it's it's a pretty easy drive. I-25 takes you all the way to Socorro, so, uh, you know, and it's only about two hours south of where we are. So a, definitely a day trip, and we're going to try some outdoor cooking today, so hopefully the weather will hold for us to make our dinner outdoors and have kind of a early picnic dinner before we do anything else and we uh, hope to swing by and see the wildlife uh, preserve for the birds and see if the uh, the cranes are there I'm pretty sure the ducks are there and they have flooded the area so we'll see if the cranes are there we saw some cranes <clears throat> along uh, Paseo del Norte in uh, Albuquerque so hoping that there are some cranes also in the uh, wildlife preserve uh, near Socorro. So we'll check all that out today. And did I miss anything? No, you got it all. Well okay. done. So that's what we'll see. We are close to Socorro now, so uh, you'll see a, a time lapse of the drive. And hopefully, we don't run into any more parades today. Um, <laughs> and uh, Well, we don't have to go through Socorro today. I just wanted to tell you that we were getting directions from Siri for the for the ride, for the drive, for the route, and then she she puts it up on the screen and she says, just to let you know, you can ask me about road conditions and crashes and uh, something uh, construction for your drive. And I was like, oh, good, ask her about that. So Toby says, hey Siri, tell me about the drive. Is there any construction or um, now my Siri is answering it. <laughs> but she said, oh, I can't tell you that right now because you're driving. I can't look that up for you because you're driving. And I was like, that would be like me telling Toby, oh, I can't look stuff up for you on my phone because you're driving. What does that matter? Really? <laughs> so anyway, fun with Siri. That's what we're doing today. And I, that's all I have to say for right now. As you can see, we have some snacks in the back. And I got a new vest. I got a new vest that you're just going to see me wearing with pockets. So pockets. I didn't have to bring a purse or a fanny pack today because I have pockets in my vest that Toby got for me. So I'll model that for you a little later. Uh, that's all I have for now, and we'll talk soon. Hi. Come on in. Look around. Thank you. I'd like Ask to get questions. up. My name is Toby, and this, this is my partner, Shelly Carney. Okay. We have a show called New Mexico Day Trips. We're out here, oh, okay. We're out here doing a story on Fort Craig. Okay. And we wondered if you had about five minutes to do an interview. <laughs> I know a lot about this fort. So. I uh, was <laughs> hoping that would be true. <laughs> And I'd like to learn about it if from you, you. If you have some specific questions. I have some specific questions, okay. but they are not going to be questions that you haven't answered already. So I'm Mark Grinstead. Uh, I'm the host here at uh, Fort Craig. And the BLM is the overseers of the complex, basically. We are 
four and a half miles off of Highway 25, east of Highway 25, uh, between Socorro and um, San Marcel. So this fort was established in 1854 and went to 1885. Uh, two years it was down from 1878 to 1879. Fort Craig's uh, was initially established in 1854. It was built in 1853 and it went through 1885 with two years of it being closed down 1878 and 1879 because the Indian Wars had kind of died off a little bit. So, and then it picked back up after eight, late 1879. So um, this fort in particular is special to me because it uh, was my mom's favorite fort. She was one of the historians for the El Camino Real forts. Um, this included several forts up and down the El Camino Real. These forts were put in place because of the 1848 uh, Mexican-American War Treaty. The Mexicans uh, requested that the United States would provide protection for the inhabitants that were already here and the ones traveling up and down the El Camino Real. So my mom was um, very versed in this fort. It was her favorite fort and uh, we spent a lot of time out here as kids from 63 to 72 hunting artifacts when you could legally and um, uh, just learning the fort. So the Camino Real was active from the early 1500s and it was a, basically the I-25 of um, back then. It was the, the way that people traveled to trade um, from Mexico City to Santa Fe and then it went on up to Denver. And it had spurs off of it that dropped down off the main trail um, to places like Fort Craig. Uh, to get water, to get food, and, and in order to keep on traveling. So uh, the fort was here not just for the El Camino Real, but for the inhabitants of the area. And the fort itself is, is um, one eighth of a mile west of 
uh, the Rio Grande. And actually the Rio Grande was even closer back in its day because the Rio Grande has shifted to the east. Uh, so yeah, it's only an eighth of a mile off the backside of the fort. So I'm sitting here babysitting a um, time lapse. It's kind of breezy. And I got my chair. I got my uh, camp chair. So I guess I'm pretty comfortable. I've got my snacks and drinks. My Perrier. My uh, snacks. And uh, doing pretty good. Um, yeah, the Fort Gregg history and the Civil War. Uh, probably one of the major and most important battles occurred right here at Fort Gregg, um, the Battle of Valverde. Uh, the battle itself uh, involved 3,800 uh, Union troops and 2,500 uh, Confederates. It lasted a full day. It was a victory for the Confederates. However, they did not take the fort. Uh, they weren't able to, they didn't have the gunpowder, they didn't have the manpower to take the fort. So they left the fort in their rear. So people these days say that the battle itself uh, was a victory for the Union in today's standards because of the fact that he left the fort in the rear. So you had Colonel Cabney, Canby, who was the Union commander. He wasn't just the commander at the fort, but he, he was the commander of the New Mexican territory. General Sibley was the Confederate he sold the story to that he was going to come west and take New Mexico and Arizona territory, the gold mines up in uh, Denver, and then move across to California. That was his wholesale, was to take the gold mines. So Fort Craig's today is, is uh, an interesting site, um, especially if you're interested in the forts of the time. It doesn't have a lot still standing, however, there's a lot still there underground. Um, the few buildings that are standing, the guardhouse at the Sally Port and the commanding officer's quarters, and then the impressive um, uh, storehouses that Sibley was after are still standing to where you can really get an idea how big they were. What is missing really with New Mexico and this site is they're not tying the fort to the battlefield well enough. So I think we need to um, tie those two together better because they're so important. Not just the fact that we're here for the Indians, but this particular battle is extremely important. So that would be one thing. Another cool thing to know about this fort in the battle is it was the only um, fort battle that participated in a Lancer charge uh, after in the Civil War, the total Civil War. So there was a Lancer charge done by the Confederates and they were repelled of course, but it was the only one that ever happened in the Civil War. It was right here.
this is the way I like my green chili cheeseburgers. Rather than trying to put chili on, then hit hit it with ketchup and mustard and mayo and all that other stuff. Just get this. The guac is an extra added touch. How's the heat? Yeah, it's huh? fine. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's not too much, not too little. Makes a good burger. Are we going anywhere else today? So we're coming out for five by the time we're, I, I want to get some drone work done here. Mm. So that means we're not going to leave here till six, probably. That may not give us a chance to stop by uh, San Antonio. I mean, uh, birdies. the birdies at uh, Bosque de la Pache. Mm -hmm. But it's not that far. So the only thing that we wanted to do at Bosque de la Pache, we called them and they said that the fields had been flooded, but that the cranes hadn't arrived yet. And when I asked them when they thought would be a better time, they said the first week in November. But we're about, I don't know, I'm going to guess 10 or 15 miles south of them on the same road on Route 1. So we just may head up in that direction to see if there's anything going on at all. Because sunset is when they start peaking. We, we've had wind and very little sunshine all day. And now that we're sitting, the wind has died down and the sunshine has come out a little bit. I mean, it's still not it's great. It's still very cloudy. Uh, but I'd like to get the drone up so that you can see an overview of the fort uh, because I think that would be a really cool shot. We have donuts, pumpkin spice donuts for dessert that my husband made, Kevin. Kevin didn't want us to forget uh, about him while we were on our day trip, so he brought us these donuts, um, donuts. the other day and we brought them here for dessert. Yummy, yum. I'll eat those after I finish my burger. You can do that while I'm cleaning up. <laughs> 